please welcome Tyler Henry. So with that said, my mom is here and she's gonna help out with the Q&A. So I'm gonna bring her on up. <laughs> Say hi. Oh. Hello everyone. <laughs> She always gets so bashful, but she basically will be the one to help me as far as with uh, the Q&A portion. She'll read the questions. Okay, ask a question, Mom. Okay, Tyler, this is really important. Okay. Christy wants to know if she's ever gonna find true love. Christy, <laughs> download Tinder. <laughs> or download Bumble. <laughs> it's actually better. Bumble's better because the ladies get to pick. It's less of a meat market that way. It's better. It's... Got that. Ask another question, Mal, because I'm too silly to be able to do a reading right now. Okay. Allie wants to know, um, why did her mom wait for her to leave the room to pass away? So great question. I, I will say just generally, when people pass away in situations where there's a long lead up to the death, they very often will time their passings. So they often will either wait for somebody to get there or they very often will pass when someone goes home to take a shower or, or when someone leaves. And that's very often because they don't want that process to be kind of stuck in our mind every time we think of them. Like my dad, sadly, had to watch my grandmother die. And I think that traumatized him on some level, seeing her face in her last moments. They often don't want that. And some people do. Some people want us to be around them and supporting them and kind of seeing them out. But um, it very much varies and is dependent on the person. But we, we very often do time are passings, and that's pretty significant. We'll, we'll take a question, Mom. <laughs> okay, Tyler, Lexi would like to know, who was your favorite celebrity reading? Uh, let's do a different question. I, I just always say, like, hmm, it really depends. Uh, Jenna Hager-Bush Hager was one of my favorites, uh, just because the presidential connection, she delivered a message on my behalf that I gave to her about the First Lady, and so she called up her mom, who was the first lady, and told her, and I made the first lady cry with the very specific story that I brought up about her, her family. So that was pretty weird. Um, let's do one more question. I can shake this energy, and then we'll move on to readings. Okay, Abby would like to know, what reading surprised you the most? Reading surprised me the most? <laughs> Bobby Brown, because Bobby Brown answered the door wearing sweatpants, and he looked like he could have been any guy. So I had literally no idea it was Bobby Brown, genuinely until after, and I was like, oh, wow, I'm an idiot. But I was also born in 1996, granted. Bobby Brown's peak, if we're being honest, was in the 80s. I'm sorry. He said, no, didn't recognize him. So, OK. I want to explain scribbling, actually, a little bit. And I actually want to start doing this more often when it comes to live shows. But scribbling is really my way of kind of turning on. So you see on my live, on my television show, I have so many shows, I don't know which one I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> You'll see that I scribble, and it's a way that I basically kind of turn on, again, weird phrase, bear with me, but it's how I connect. It's how I start kind of opening my mind, and then when I'm not scribbling, I'm able to go about my day-to-day -day life and order a coffee and say hello to the waiter and all that um, without reading people actively. So scribbling is just a repetitive motion that allows me to connect, and it, you see it a lot in a lot of actual religious rituals. So in Catholicism, you have the rosary beads, right? That's repetitive. Certain cultures, like in Tibet, they will uh, do the singing drums or the singing, singing bowls, um, chanting. All these things are repetitive actions that help alter our states of mind, and it's a spiritual practice I've implemented to kind of make that necessary shift. So that is why I scribble. Um, let's do a question, and then we'll jump right into the next reading. Tyler, Sheila would like to know if our loved ones who have passed will come to us in our dreams. Absolutely. The two most prominent ways loved ones make a connection is through dreams, because it is a subconscious state where we are uh, almost hyper-receptive of everything and not able to kind of let our conscious mind block things out. Dreams are a huge way that they make connections and really just a great insight into our subconscious. Um, the second way that I will tell you that you might not expect that they communicate is through something called synchronicity, okay? Meaningful coincidences meaningful coincidences. That is one of the strongest ways that they seem to communicate from the other side to us. So just kind of keep that in mind. And not everybody remembers their dreams, but for those of you who do, it can be a really valuable way of getting uh, more self-awareness and sometimes even getting visits. Um, and very often, spirit visitations will feel more vivid. They will kind of have a beginning, middle, and end, um, versus a regular dream will just be a bunch of nonsense that you can't remember the start of, the middle of, or the end of. So that's just good to keep in mind as far as what to look out for 
for a visitation. So, Tyler, Ryan wants to know what reading has impacted you the most in your career? Reading that's impacted me the most? Ah, we would be here all night if, if I had to answer that one. But honestly, they all impact me genuinely, and I feel like I learned something not only about my process, but genuinely the human condition and how important it is to communicate in, in the here and the now how much we love people and really tell people. Because so often we think, oh, I'll tell them later, or oh, you know, whatever, I'm busy with this and that, and then we never get the chance. So my work has made me a lot more mindful. Every time my mom leaves, I have to tell her I love you. I, I, and it's terrible, because I'm convinced every time I say goodbye, like, she's gonna die in a car accident. It's horrible, don't laugh, but it's awful, because I have seen so many examples of the ways that people go. So anytime someone's in my life and they're a part of it, I communicate that love, I tell them. I don't go to sleep angry, I talk it out, I work it out, and I think we all, could benefit from saying it now. It really makes a big difference. So, great question. Okay, Tyler, Next is radio. <laughs> Trisha is asking um, yep. when we see orbs, um, what does that mean? <laughs> it could be lens flare, it could be dust, <laughs> it could be water. Water is on the lens, that's very often an example. Uh, I'm not discounting the possibility that orbs come through in photos, it's just 99% of the time they have a completely uh, explainable explanation. Um, but that's just the way it is. I mean, I'm a very skeptical person despite being a medium, which a lot of people find funny. But I've also investigated a number of paranormal places and haunted places, and I think it's important to never lose our critical thinking, right? Um, now, if you see an orb with your own eyes, you know, that's a little bit more compelling. And also, fun fact, if you take an orb photo and the flash is on, the flash is usually what causes the light to bounce off the dust particles. So if you get one without the flash, then it might be a little bit more compelling. But all right, uh, let's do one more question and then I'll just jump right into this next thing. Hi guys. Okay, <laughs> Tabitha is asking, um, how are you able to turn off your gift? Not scribbling helps. Um, and I also am able to kind of blow off all of the steam by doing readings so that when I'm going about my day-to-day -day life, I can kind of maintain some sense of normalcy. Okay, Tyler, this is super important. Okay. Steve wants to know who's going to win the Super Bowl. Oh no. Is that like soccer? What's Oh, you came to the wrong medium, girlfriends. I'm like, I'll tell you what's in fashion currently, but I don't know about the Super Bowl. No, I'm just kidding. I'm I don't know. I don't know, I'm sorry. Ask my dad. Uh, let's do one more question. Okay, um, Amy is asking if there is any significance in seeing the same numbers over and over. Okay, uh, great question, a lot of people do. And I would say it's really only significant if you lend meaning to it. So I had a situation where I actually had a client, it was a really interesting situation where her grandmother had died. And she, it was, it was her birthday and she was opening up a card and her birthday had happened to fall on 11-11. And she was cleaning her house and she was really close with her grandmother, and her grandmother had died quite a bit uh, prior. And as she was going through these things, she found this envelope, and when she opened it, it was a card from her grandmother that her grandma forgot to send her, and so her grandma died. <laughs> and when she opened it, it was a happy birthday card, and it happened to coincidentally be her birthday when she was actually cleaning her house. Well, after that, she was seeing 11-11 everywhere, and I feel like that was a literal symbolic reference to the birthday. Um, but in other cases, you know, coincidences happen. We live in a statistical world, and so it'd be kind of weird if coincidences didn't happen sometimes, but it's when they are meaningful coincidences that I feel they are worth looking at um, or assessing. So really great question, and there's that.